Welcome to another edition of The Gamer Gambit, where a fateful roll of the dice will fill you with awe or indifference. We've got a couple of titles for you today. Before I send you there, I just want to let you know we're almost at our 10th episode, and that's pretty exciting here. Thank you for watching, and I appreciate the views. I hope you'll stick around for the journey, but for now, let's get back to the videos. All right, so my game this week was called Patches of Adventure where the mayor has declared as the start of a harvest season and festival, and to kick it off, you have begun as a seed collector. You are to collect four seeds in this death-defying competition. You know, I actually saw this, like within our bundle, I saw this title out there, so that's, that's funny that I now recognize this. So it looks very um, Zelda. Yeah. Zelda-ish, like, you know, N Nintendo. Um, and right now, I'm walking through and I have no idea, outside of the initial instructions, which was uh, WASD to move and left-click to fire when you get it. And that's, that's all you get outside of this mayor seed collection, a collection event. So, it references, if I recall, it references digging in the opening, um, in the opening text. And it looks like you had, your character has this little shovel. Oh, yeah. So, I'm expecting... Now. So I'm expecting to do something with digging, i.e. my assumption is that there's something hidden under some tile and I need to, you know, dig it up or reveal it. So as I'm running around, you'll see me exploring, you'll see me try to go into these houses and doors. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can, I, I'm bad and I just didn't figure it out. But um, it does not appear, these appear, buildings just appear to be, uh, you know, part of the scenery or, or blockage of sorts. So I'm, I start to move around and you can see me start to try to cover every single Spot. every pixel <laughs> right because i'm expecting to kind of reveal something so i'm just like going around exploring um trying to find what i'm presuming presumably is not in visual in visual view so i got to dig it up or whatever so i'm just running around exploring and the interesting thing about the mechanics of this is the it's almost like you're on you're on ice in a sense if when you press if you just were to tap uh, w, you would actually move up two of those kind of horizontal the, of those grid squares you kind of see with the, with the textures. Mm -hmm. And here I actually picked up a seed, and I didn't see it. Is that you could actually see it on the ground, but I didn't actually see it. So I thought I just revealed a tile. Okay. So I decided to click, and this is the sound has actually been playing this whole time. There just is no sound except for this, which is the sound of you. Pulling the trigger, something from like Galaga, yeah, or asteroids or whatever else. So now I'm trying to, um, again, I'm trying, you know, trying to find more seeds, and because of the clicking, I decide to resurrect the mouse clicker from last episode, <laughs> yeah, so that I didn't have to, so I didn't have to spam click everything. So I'm, I paused it here. I'm going to rewind um, because you might not have heard it from when I was talking. But when I turned that on, I actually revealed, I didn't know it at the time, but actually revealed that you can use, the, part of the mechanic of this thing to shoot is to break down some of the destructible um, scenery. So I'm going to see if I can rewind this. And then listen for, it sounds like a, a pop can opening, like a tss. Did you hear that? Yeah. I don't know how, hopefully loud it came through. So I didn't know it at the time. And then, I, and then I finally see there that I'm breaking things. <laughs> and then very soon, the sound gets very annoying, so I stop. <laughs> so here we are. I got one seed of four, and I turn the clicker off to say, hey, am I kind of cheating with my clicker? Am I, am I breaking, bugging out the game? So let me try to do it individually. And I couldn't right there, and I don't know why. But then I turned on the auto clicker, and it instantly evaporated. Yeah. So now I'm running around thinking that, hey, maybe this thing is how I reveal more seeds. So I start shooting everything. Because there's no description on anything. I start shooting trees running around. Right there, I actually hit a trap, which are only in the forest. So you'll see me teleport back there multiple times as I'm trying to figure this out, find the bears. I'm navigating through the forest. Not knowing, still, since I didn't see that first seed. Mm -hmm. I still don't know if I'm supposed to touch a certain pixel or whatever else. She'll see me still going back and forth, teleporting trap after trap. 
And in a couple of these screens, if you look closely, and maybe I can find one and, uh, and pause it, you can actually see the seed on the ground. But for me, I, I can't, either it's, it's me visually or just I, I, at the time I didn't understand, I, I never saw the first one. So I never knew what to look for. So as I'm, my, my, my eyes are basically staying in the context of the maze, going through the maze, obstacles, traps, running over hidden tiles rather than actually just looking in spots for them because I had no, because I ran over that first one by accident. And now you have two by accident as well. Right. So what it turns out with two I tested is, um, well, let me describe this part first. This was really annoying because... <laughs> Because the, you know, I mentioned you touch, I'm going to pause it right here. So I mentioned you touch the up arrow or the W or whatever, and you go up two tiles. Yeah. So in this particular instance, there is a trap. If you see my mouse movement, there's a trap like right here. And I hit it like two, three, four, five, six, seven times in a row, thinking that this was just an area that was blocked and I would have to find another way around or whatever. But you have to, you have to get yourself right along I'll scoot it back. You got to get you got to get yourself right along the bottom of those tree stumps, or else you hit that. Mm -hmm. So that kind of like bothered me in a sense that the way the mechanics are set up are in such a way that you have to like touch to go up two and a half. You know, hold it just a little bit to come up, and then touch to go back down. If you know to get that perfect horizontal, mm -hmm. so we had to do that in a couple of instances, and um, this was one of them. And that kind of bothered me because I kept on hitting this thing over and over again. And then once you get by one hidden trap. Now my mentality was, well, I'm still running around looking for secret tiles because now I have two seeds and I have no idea how I got them. <laughs> my assumption is that I ran over hidden tiles. So I'm going through more and more and I get to this part here. And I'm going to, I'm going to reveal pretty much the possible exit. I thought this was the part where I went the other direction. But I come down here and I, I've actually find somebody, somebody else. This, this thing. So I'm sitting there and I'm, you know, trying to shoot it, thinking like, you know, this is a boss or something like that. And then he touches me and I get teleported, not back to the forest, but to the beginning. So I, I sat here and tried to mess with this guy to get past him. Yeah. And he just, he goes in a simple pattern, shoots down like seven times, and I got hit by it over. And over and at the bottom, I didn't realize, but there's another forest trap. So you can't go down bottom. You you can't run into him. You can't touch him. You can't touch those things. And you can see right now, I'm touching. I'm just barely tapping W and then D, just trying or S, excuse me, just trying to get in that perfect horizontal. Yeah, yeah. And keep on. And I keep on trying to beat this guy over or get past him. In any case, over and over and over again. And it's starting to get frustrating because the the run back is pretty far from a i mean it takes like i don't know 12 seconds to run back yeah, but yeah, when you're sitting here and you got to mess with the controls yeah and so i eventually get through. past him right so the, the hit box, my assumption is <laughs> my assumption is that the hitbox of those little things are like the size of the full entire square <laughs> right or the, the full entire unit um so then i pick up i pick up the third seed from that other screen and now i'm looking for the fourth one and i'm checking past this guy um, you know, again, on both sides, thinking that I missed something. So now I'm getting a little more frustrated because he's got to do it again. Yes. How many times do I got to get past this guy? So I eventually find that, find out or figure out that, okay, it's not there. Let's look elsewhere. So I still, the, that third seed, I can, I can show you, uh, you'll see it at the end. That third seed, I still didn't see it. And then finally this fourth seed, I didn't see that either. And then yeah. the game's over. <laughs> so I beat the game. <laughs> All right. Four seeds. So then I'm, really I'm beat the game. Right. Yes, that's it. You get like four seeds. So now I'm like, okay, let me see about doing this again. Right. Right. So I go to do it again, and I I remember where the first ding was, but I don't see why. So you see me, I'm I'm in here checking stuff, and then finally there, I think is yeah, when I finally saw aha, there's something on the ground. And then I test without the mouse thing, without the mouse the auto clicker. I test it, and it's an, it, it looks to be totally an angle thing. So if you're if you're coming at it in a more um, orthogonal angle, your shots, it seems like you have a, a higher chance of the first couple of shots breaking it. Now I'm just going through it again to say, is the game really over? Because there's some other parts that I was running doing the follow the right side of the maze kind of mm -hmm. thing to see if there was stuff I could run into. And it looked like that there was tons of content. 
out there that I hadn't even touched. So I'm like, what is the, I'm thinking in my head, what is the point of a screen where the whole entire screen is area that I cannot traverse except for the very bottom pixel that I came up from the bottom screen and it allows me to run across that bottom edge. So I see a whole entire screen, but so what's the point of that screen? So I'm like, there has to be something with that that I'm missing. Yeah. So I go through this. So I go through the game and here you can see the, um, the seed right there in the bottom right yeah. of the screen. Yeah. And then I finally see it. Okay. Yeah. I know what's going on. So I'm like, okay, let's do this again. <laughs> so I go through it can... again. Yes. I go through it again. And this time I'm, I was thinking I was going to do a speed run. And then I botched the speed run in the forest against that boss. So then I can't, this is the screen I'm talking about. So if you look at that screen, yeah. 90% of it, I can't get to why. So I start just saying, well, let's see if I'm missing something about this game. And maybe I got lucky on a path to victory. I accidentally guessed how to get the four seed. So then finally, I figured out that this is, it looks like that um, this portion, this uh, wavy ingrained portion, if you look at it from like um, one of those uh, three, well, my, my interpretation was that it is the side of a cliff face and you're seeing, you're seeing the cross section. So this up here would be higher ground. And this mm -hmm. down here would be the cliff face, and I'm on lower ground, so I need to find a ramp of sorts to get up there. That's how I interpreted it, to try to bring somewhat of a 3D context to a 2D game that I'm actually getting up on a hill of sorts. Right. But it's just, the texture is, so that's how, I, that's how I pictured it. So then I come through this other area, and I'm zigzagging around trying to find, okay, here's another, there's the area where I came back up, and I'm kind, looks like I'm kind of on elevation. There's another area I can shoot, okay, am I getting up on elevation there? I go around, and eventually I run into um, another seed that's up here that I also don't see when I pick up, because you're running so fast, and they're like on the edges of the screen and stuff. Right. I don't, uh, yep, they're right there, I, I ran over it, ding. Yeah, I saw it and before you hit I, it, yeah. Now I know what to look for. Well, right, yeah. So, so then I was like, I'm going to do this again. <laughs> so, I went. So I went through it. It's. Um, I mean, that's that's the end of the clip. But I okay. went through it and attempted to speed run it. And you can. And I could do it if we wanted to. I could do it here uh, live. But if you, assuming you don't run into any problems um, with that that character, you basically have two options to beat the game. There's there appears to be five seeds. And you would have an option of going out into that, I'll call it the desert area, the cliff area, because there's no dangers out there. So you could get the first seed in town, go get that one that's out there in the desert, go get the one that's on the north side of town, and then break the barrier into the forest and go down the area where there's no traps and get the fourth seed. The caveat of doing that from like a speed running perspective is that to get out into that, that deserty, you know, cliff, whatever area, that's, that's an extended journey. So from an optimized, I was trying to see if I could, you know, optimize it where the most optimum path would be to get the one in town, go up, break the one barrier just to the northwest, get the one above, come in the back of the forest, and one, two, three, come in the back of the forest and cross the boss to get that one, and then um, run into a trap, which takes you to the beginning of the forest where mm -hmm. that fourth seed is, and then get that. So I was trying to do that and kind of mess around with speed running. Basically, if you if you play your cards right, you're talking about a sixty. You can beat it faster than the original myth when you know the path through. Yeah. yeah right. Sure. So that's like it's like a Mist. it's like a minute. Missed. Sorry, not myth. Thank yeah, you. Correct. Missed. I remember this. Yeah. So that was uh, so that was the game. That was Patches of Adventure. Um, I had audio in the clip the whole time, but there wasn't any, you know, from a, from a music, you know, sound, whatever standpoint, the only sound was um, when you broke something, when you shot the weapon, which very quickly encouraged you to not use it uh, or use it as little as possible. Um, when you broke something, when you shot, when you hit a trap, and I believe that was the same sound as when you got hit by that, I'll call it a boss, but when you got hit by that, that NPC in any way, shape, or form. Right. But that was Patches of Adventure. Um, total score, I believe I gave it was um, a 2 out of 5. Um, I gave it a 1 in art, um, a 0 in mechanics, a 1 in controls, just because the, at least as far as the game was concerned, you really didn't have much use for any other controls, so um, I'm giving it a 1. Um, the story narrative, the mayor wants you to collect seeds and go. I didn't. I didn't find that quite captivating, so I gave that a zero. And then sound, there wasn't any. But the right. 
the the sound you needed to use was the most annoying sound. So <laughs> I gave I gave it a zero for that. That's my personal personal preference. The sound did not um, fit the overall game and mechanic as far as digging for seeds and you don't use your shovel and you shoot circles to break down rocks and stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah, it was very crude. Uh, very, um, I mean, it, it's actually great probably for a first game. So whoever developed, who was it that made this? Do you remember? Um, I had that written down and not in front of me. So let me see. I don't know if you happen to have it handy. Um, you could bail me out. Uh, I do, in fact. Uh, made by X Hunter KO. Yes. So I would say, you know, I'm not sure of the, the person's, you know, like background and experience. This is, I think there's a lot to potentially build off of here because lots of people like games in this genre and you don't have to go so far with, um, like the, from, from an art perspective, you don't have to have, since it's the, the texture quality is as minimal as like eight bit, sixteen bit, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, based off these small mechanics, making going in and out of buildings, maybe adding a way to have dialogue with other NPCs, and it really expanding the story and some of the mechanics. I think a lot of the fundamentals are already here. So, to um, X Mister X Hunter, you know, I mean, if this was your first game or you know new into gaming into this mm -hmm. genre and doing it, I mean, you know, bravo, bravo, good start. Yeah. So hopefully my score did not. And not bit feel like it knocked you down a peg. I but. think you're looking at two to four bits. Maybe four <laughs> bits. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Fair enough. But um, but you know, hey, the the price is right at two bucks. You know, to support um, an indie indie developer, and from a an exploration standpoint, there would be you know the the younger crowd, young if you have any kids or anything like that, younger crowd. There's not too much in depth in mechanics or anything that they might uh, they might have some fun just kind of running around and messing around with it. All right, well, uh, my title was called Super Dunk Man, and um, I initially, as I, as I told you earlier, I initially ran this game um, with just myself to get in there and figure out how to play it. Uh, I had CPU players. It is designed to be a multiplayer game, but, um, you know, like I said, I just I wanted to figure out how to play it. And um, so I, I did. I played through it a little bit, and I was you know, not too interested in it, um, but... I re-recorded some clips uh, with me playing multiplayer with my kids. As I said, this is Super Dunk Man, and it's by Ander F <laughs> Ander FW, something like that. Uh, and so let me just uh, so I, I'm going to show you some clips to just kind of give you an idea of what this game. There's not a whole lot of diversity in this. I will say that. But you can see here that we have to go through and choose our teams. Uh, it's heavily multiplayer slanted, so it's it's based on the team system. Um, so you get, figuring out the controls a little bit and getting everybody to agree on what's happening. You probably know how this goes. Uh, and then once you get past this yep. and everybody's ready, then it's a matter of uh, moving forward and selecting characters. And there were a bunch of characters to choose, so this was another thing where everybody just you know let's negotiate and figure out what players were going to be. Uh, and this truly. Uh, is 8-bit, uh, and we've even got kind of 8-bit arcade sound in the background, uh, which is cool. And then I've got some different um, uh, screens that I can choose from, different courts that I can select, uh, and the courts have different dynamics to them, different effects that take place. So depending on where you are, the, the goal heights might be different, the gravity might be different, the, there might be wind, you know, so there's, there's other things that kind of fall in, which I think is it's kind of a fun aspect to it. Um, we chose space, and as it turns out, we liked space the most. We kept coming back to this one. So here is the madness of this game. Uh, initially, everybody is just trying to figure out who they are. Like, you've forgotten which player you picked. Uh, everything's bouncing around so much. Uh, you, yeah, you just can't keep an eye on your player. Uh, also, on the ball too. Yeah. Also, it's a team game, so you definitely don't know who your teammate is, right? You're definitely working against your teammate. Um, so this first round was us just like flailing around. Now there is one CPU player, and so that's the only saving grace here is that the CPU actually knows what he's doing, <laughs> and we are just causing havoc. So what's interesting <laughs> here is you can actually foul your teammate, um, and 
you can block the, the shot, block the ball at any time, whether you're in the middle of a, a shot or you know under your own goal, or you know you can just block at any time. Uh, and so anytime you bump into somebody, basically they either get pushed back or they drop the ball. Most of the time they drop the ball and it goes bouncing off. And since we're in the space map, uh, there are times when people are in space, like they just go flying off the screen. Like here, people are going up above the screen. <laughs> and the, the ball too can bounce around wildly. Uh, and then the particle effects are the same for the players as they are for the ball. So it was... Mad hard to keep an eye on. Yeah, it was mad, and you can see this has been going on for a while. The score is and zero, so zero zero zero. <laughs> I'm, I'm, that's what I'm gonna ask. But how do you how does someone score? That's right. So it, it didn't take like we we knew how to score. We just could not pull it off. Like just so much bumping, and with four players out there who didn't know what they were doing, this was our game. So eventually we got through this game. Played a bunch more after it, and here's uh, like a future game. Alright, so this looks the same, but what you don't realize is that there is some actual, like, direction going on. Like, people are doing their best to make their shots and steal the ball and keep other people. So at this point, it really is offense, defense. It's not just chaos. And you can see... Is that because you're experienced in the game at this point? Yeah, just like a few games in, everybody is kind of figuring it out. Um, and so at this point, it's still hard to, like, control all of this stuff. But everybody's movements, they look chaotic, but everybody's movements right now are kind of directed, right? We are all trying to do a thing, whether it be steal the ball or knock away other players from knocking you away, you know, knocking your teammate. We're also not blocking our teammate anymore. We are now aware of our teammate. And you can see already, 4-1, to one, right? Like, goals are happening. Uh, this game's moving much faster than the other one. So you said you were playing with your kids. Did, uh, did you get stuck with the CPU teammate? Uh, we, we actually went all different variations. So in the beginning, I assumed that um, it would be fun if they were on a team together and I was with the CPU. So that's what we did. And uh, we kept the CPU. We, you have different levels for the CPU. So I kept the CPU low level and then we just figured it out. And um, I dominated the CPU. I don't think the CPU got any points, uh, and a lot of that in the beginning was because I kept knocking him out of the way. Um, <laughs> but then everybody started getting better, and so we started splitting the teams up differently. And so we would put my daughter with the CPU, and we'd put my younger son with the CPU, and switch that around. And by the by, the final game that we played, uh, we went back to space because we like this. So you can see right here, it's one to four. I'm on the uh, the left side, so I have one, and then the other team has four. So definitely not dominating anymore. Uh, but you can see, scoring is just happening one after another. Uh, so this game... Because you got the physics and mechanics understood. Right, now things are cooking, and it's, it's a hard game now. We also increased the CPU to a level two. So now the CPU is a little bit more of a threat, and so I felt like I really had to work uh, to go against that CPU. We put my youngest son with the CPU, the higher level CPU, uh, and he was actually scoring a bunch of goals too. So it was just altogether a much harder game. But you can see five to six, like it's it's rapid at this point. And so we ended this game with everybody making about the same number of goals. I think there was a, a two point difference when when I won. Uh, whereas in the beginning, it was like a nine point difference. Not, not just saying, you know, it was about two point difference when the game over. It's like, nah, it's, nah, it was about two point difference when I won. When I won. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually me and my daughter. When, me, when my daughter and I won, there was a two point difference, which was incredibly different than the way we started this game. Uh, so, I mean, this is how far are you? How far are you into experience as far as playing the game and getting the mechanics at this point? Um, Time-wise, this is probably an hour and a half. You know, it didn't take that many. Um, number of games, you know, there were a few games that I played personally, so I, I was better already because of that. Um, and then I think they played three or four games as well with me. So, you know, you're looking at three games in, you, you get it, you're moving pretty well. Yeah, there we go, 10 to eight, just like that. Um, and then when you 
When you do win, it actually goes to a screen where it shows you uh, stats, which is interesting because these things all got really similar here at the end. You can see the, the dunks, the streaks, uh, and the possession time. Like in the beginning, I had a minute of possession time. By this game, we all had, you know, 16 seconds of possession time, roughly. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so very different. Um, so all that said, my my score, and I'll, I'll close down the video here, but my, my score uh, on this was um, uh, initially two out of five. And what my feelings were was, no, this game was better than two out of five. And then I wound up bringing it up to three out of five because ultimately I said, the 8-bit sound is cheesy, but it completely works with the title, right? With the style of this game. I, I agree with that. Yeah. 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 So I, you know, in the beginning I was like, eh, I don't really like the sound. I don't like the graphics, but also it's all kind of perfect together. So on art, I didn't give him any points on art. Uh, just, and that's, you know, this is all subjective, right? But my, my feeling is, is I'm, I'm getting a little tired of the 8-bit style. Uh, you and I, we lived through this. <laughs> so yeah. I, you know, like it was, it was great. Right. But I want to see new stuff now, or if you are going to do a bit style, I want to see something that I've never seen before. I want to see something amazing. And I have seen that. And this game just felt like it was basic, you know, it was, as far as graphics go, um, ultimately it was fine. Right. Because the, the mechanics were, were cool. There was enough. So I don't like sports games at all. Uh, but I liked NBA jams. If you remember this one, uh, and that's shooting up. Yeah. Yeah. He's on fire. Uh, yeah. I, I liked that because you, there were other things going on in that game. You, you had funny little things that you could do. The ball actually caught on fire when you, you know, when you shot across the court. Um, so this game reminded me of that cause there were, it, it was basketball, but it was, it was a game. You know, Eccentric. It was, yeah. Yeah. It was a, it was a little unique. Uh, the controls were super intuitive and easy. There was nothing to it. We played controls controllers rather. Um, and it, it worked out beautifully. It was responsive. You know, I had no issue with that. Um, so it got one for mechanics, one for control. Uh, there was no story, although they do allude to a story mode forthcoming. So I'm guessing that there'll be a campaign mode and I didn't have a picture of it, but their, um, their, their box art screen, if you will, uh, shows like, I don't know, boss level champions, boss level players that maybe you would go up against and perhaps one day play as those characters. Um, so I'm guessing that story mode opens up some interesting new options that would be a lot of fun. Uh, I think it'd be more, um, more uh, killer instinct, Mortal Kombat style, where you just beat team after team after team and go up the so. ranks with some boss stuff, or maybe more tournament style, where I, I was thinking more playing Kombat different style. teams. Yeah, I was thinking Mortal Kombat. I mean, they are going to be teams, but I'm guessing that you get through the teams and then you go against a boss and that boss is somebody way overpowered and cool looking because like the bosses, they, like they had some that were had butterfly wings, right? So now I've got a flying character that I have to deal with. So clearly that would be an interesting oh, maybe to manage, you know. Oh, um, I see. The so boss, instead of maybe being harder at if they, they might to, have an opportunity like, to add a, a twerk to them, a tweak to the mechanic, not a twerk, a tweak to the mechanics. Yeah, that gives the boss an advantage. Right, right. right. Um, and then, like I said, I gave him one for sound. So that was three out of five. Now, I will say that the one thing that we don't rate on these games is just like general fun. Was the game fun? Regardless of all the uh, the practical scoring, was the game fun? So I feel like I want to give it a bonus point for the fact that I sat here with my kids and played it and we had a ball. Like we were yelling at each other. We were screaming, laughing. It was, it was just genuinely a lot of fun to do couch co-op, you know, team basketball game with this. Um, and we likened That's it actually against the rules. Yeah, it is. It is strictly. We, uh, we compared it to, um, speed runners, which, uh, we all enjoy playing speed runners, which is kind of a lo-fi, um, arcade scroller where you just race. Um, and so the, actually the, uh, what is it? Uh, what are the four to five of us will sit down and play speed runners, uh, for like an hour and have a lot of my kids, my kids, my kids versus your kids. They'd love it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. My, my daughter got really good at it. <laughs> She's crushing. Um, so yeah, it was, it was fun like that. Like we would probably put it in the lineup if we were down there playing some couch co-op, it, it might show up in the lineup, uh, to do that. So three out of five on the scoreboard. Uh, I feel like it deserves a bonus point for just being fun. And that is Super Dunk Man by uh, Andrew. 
<laughs> and a rift delta. Well, perhaps we could um, in the future we could incorporate that into maybe like a replayability category. Yeah, if that could if that could be a superset of you know was the game you know like fun, enjoyable, exciting, blah blah blah. That might mean that would pick it back up again sometime. Right. Right. Yeah, and the duels game I think was the same way for you that you guys actually had a lot of fun doing it once you figured oh, it out. Oh yeah. And we've we've played it again. I mean, there was it's just like your your dunking game where it was a lot of fun. To me, I would say that you guys would probably play a lot of it and then there'll be a com- time where it just falls off the cliff. Yeah. And then when you go to play it again, it'll come right back up and you'll play it That's for right. like, you know, hour, two hours straight and just get a great you know, belly laughs and stuff out yeah. of it. Same thing with dangerous duels. We took a break from it. And then suddenly my son was like, um, he pulled up the laptop and just fired it up. And was like, dad, you want to play? Yeah, let's go let's do, do some it. duels. You know, yeah. <laughs> let's fire up the controllers. Your mind. I would probably follow this guy to uh, like, let me know when updates come to the game. Cause I'd love to try out story mode and see what, ha- cause it'll just add, you know, new party tricks, probably new courts to play on. Um, and I think all of that would actually be pretty fun. So yeah, all in all good experience. All right. Well, as always, Corey, good game. See you next week. Good game.